Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a special year-end episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. We're going to be going over, at the moment, my favorite death metal records of 2020. And keep in mind, I'm not adding certain releases to this because they belong elsewhere. We're going to eventually do a whole entire albums of the year top 20 list. But right now, these are my top four, because I couldn't really make my mind up. My top four favorite death metal releases of 2020. So far, because I'm still waiting on the new A Feather and Bone, the cassette got lost in USPS Limbo. I don't know where the fuck it is, kind of sucks, but... Hopefully it shows up. Same with the LP. Like, pre-ordered the LP months ago, and I know it got held up, and nothing you can do about that shit. But, that's life. So, same with Windigang. New Windigang does not release for, like, another two weeks. So, there's that. So, again, there's certain records that aren't going to be in here, and there's a reason for that. But there's only four records, and like I said, I couldn't make my mind up. And this is kind of out of order, but you know what? My year-end favorite happens to be what we're blasting, and that is Leprophiliac Necrosis. Head Split Records, thank you for releasing this stateside on cassette I don't know if this has a vinyl release but fuck it needs one this is death metal for fans of death metal it's filthy it's fucking just everything I personally as a death metal fan want from a death metal release Leprophiliac nailed it. Like, seriously, nailed it. To the abyss and back, decomposition in vitro, infesting the intruder. Every song on here is just amazing. Jigoko, Shajujo, Fatal Frame, Incision of Insanguination, Monolith, Toxic Waste Dilution and The Bile Squeezer. Fucking killer death metal here. And you get some real death on the cover from the Suicide Forest in Japan. I at first seriously thought that was a zombie from the film Zombie. Or if you live elsewhere, Zombie 2. Pretty much the zombie film where the zombie fights this fucking tiger shark. It's that one. The Lucio Fulci zombie. I, I thought that was the one zombie. It looks actually very similar. But, yeah, that's the death is real here with Leprophiliac. And Necrosis is just absolutely dialed the fuck in in every way possible. Classic sounding, yet it's new, it's awesome, and I love it. Leprophiliac Necrosis. Now, sadly, I cannot add Altar of Gore. Obscure and Obscene Gods, because last year, I happened to get the fucking advanced promo copy, and that made my album of the year list. So, I can't do it. I can't have it on there two years in a row. Although it fucking deserves to be. I fucking love Altar of Gore, and yeah. Just honorable mention, because last year I threw this in to my year-end list, although there was only 25 copies at the time. You know... Here's the official NVNM release right here. And this dropped in 2020. So this would be on my year-end list. Altar of Gore, 
obscure and obscene gods, but the promo made it onto my list last year, and there's not really a difference besides the cosmetics. But Joe is the fucking man, and just everybody involved with NVNM, like Blasphematory, Depths of the Obscurity, so much good stuff. But on to the top three. And this one right here is kind of, well, probably one of the more chaotic death metal releases of the year. And it's not Black Curse. Because I, I consider Black Curse a little bit more than just death metal. And the same should go for Ceremonial Bloodbath, The Tides of Blood, but no. This really actually does what the Disney Star Wars films tried to do, and that was, you know, give you these expectations and then subvert them. Here it starts off like, oh, it's just a war metal band. And then, no, it goes into some fucking straight up chaotic Titan blood territory. Then there's like fucking deicide riffs, and it's just awesome. Ceremonial bloodbath, the tides of blood on sentient ruin, laboratories, yo, fucking awesome. And. My homie Curtis, he's sending the LP to the channel, which I think is fucking awesome. Thank you, Curtis. And just the Tides of Blood by fucking Ceremonial Bloodbath. This is some insane Canadian death metal. It's evil, it's dark, it's chaotic, but at the same time, it's digestible. It's fucking awesome like even if you know you're used to the more traditional side of death metal this is a very interesting listen it's kind of like listening to death metal on psychedelics it's fucking out there crazy and you know Side A is Command Sacrifice, while Side B is The Void Staring Back. And it's just fucking sick. Primitive, Book of Black Blessings, The Throat of Belial, Hordes of Demons Feeding, Hammer Throne, Seven Wells, and Ceremonial Bloodbath in the Depths. Fucking great stuff from British Columbia. Evil lyrics, awesome fucking artwork. Everything about this release is great. The production is perfect for what it is with the chaotic riffing and just the urgency of this release. Like, it's fucking awesome. Ceremonial Bloodbath, The Tides of Blood. It's, wow. It's one of those records that I'll be listening to for a couple years to come, definitely. Now, next up, this was a very tough decision, but we have the state of Illinois Motor Vanished Cadaver Fuck yeah to the boys in Motor Aaron is also on one of my favorite demos of the year But that's a tale for a different day Goat Throne Records did the CD The Mighty Rotted Life Records handled the vinyl release And Head Split did the cassette Just straight up Midwest death metal. This could have dropped in 1993 and you probably would not have known the difference. If you're a fan of just pummeling 
old school death metal, for lack of a better term. Oh yeah, Motor have you covered with banished cadavers, especially if you're a fan of early 90s Midwest death metal, as well as our friends down in Florida like Obituary. Because Aaron channels his inner John Tardy at times and sounds fucking great doing it. Like... Take a quick look at the LP real fast. These three gentlemen, death metal fucking maniacs. And again, this is a release written by death metal maniacs for death metal maniacs. Very, very classic insert. A nice little collage. Great promo photo. It's just fucking sick. I, I really love this release. And Cody at Fix My Face Records did a great job mastering it. It's super, super good. And uh, just in case you care, I know this just got reissued, I think. But here is the first press, if that stuff matters to you. Pretty sure it's purple or blue. I'm colorblind, so they both kind of look the same to me. Very badass stuff. Seriously. If you like your death metal sounding like it's from the past, but still has that, like, pummeling nature that is the new wave of American death metal, you can't go wrong with Motor Vanished Cadaver. Cadavers, I'm sorry. I always accidentally fuck that up. I always call it Vanished Cadaver. It's Vanished Cadavers. With an S. And here's the cassette version. Whoops. Good shit. And lastly, you know what? We're gonna switch tunes real fast. Because this release needs to be played while we go over it. But my death metal record of the year, Leprophiliac Necrosis. I don't care if you don't agree with me. It's just everything I personally want out of a death metal album. But here is a very, very close, pretty much almost tied for number one release here. Now, these are two very different releases. The only real similarity is they're both death metal. They're both written by fans of death metal for fans of death metal, and I'm talking about Rochester, New York's Undeath. It's like having both Rob Barrett and Rob Russe on a Cannibal Corpse record together. Fucking A, lesions of a different kind by Undeath is the way death metal is meant to sound and the way American death metal sounds in 2020. If we were to make a time capsule, I would definitely make sure this release was put into that time capsule when it came to death metal. Prosthetic fucking records as well, and Maggot Stomp handled the cassette. It's fucking amazing. Hails to Kyle Beam, Alexander Jones, and Matt Browning. Matt Browning, who did the artwork. Oh my god, can we please share psychedelics one day? Look at the cover art. Definitely the best cover of 2020. But you also have 10 of the best death metal tracks of 2020. 
pummeling American death metal. If you're a fan of New York death metal, especially early Cannibal Corpse, and you've never heard any of the Undeath demos, meet your new favorite band, this throne of slime and ectoplasmic death is pretty much a throne for the masters of death metal in America in 2020. Hails to undeath, you fucking deserve it. Coming off just amazing demo responses, amazing live performances. Undeath is, to me, a great example of American death metal in the year of No Lord 2020. And even before that, like going back to the first demo, there was something special in that water down in, well, up in Rochester. And Undeath was definitely drinking it and it helped create just some of the gnarliest guitar work awesome vocals, killer drumming, great production, just an amazing release. And it came out of Philadelphia production-wise, so that's always gnarly, because uh, I've never heard of the person that uh, recorded this and stuff, so it's something to look into in the future when it comes to my own project. And... Uh, Recorded at the Headroom, Philadelphia, by Scoops Dardius in January 2020. So, probably gonna do a little bit of research on uh, the Headroom in Philadelphia. I don't know if that's at Creep Records. I, I really don't know. But I'm gonna do some research because... Undeath lesions of a different kind is skull crushing death metal that reigns supreme. Lesions of a different kind is the sound of subterranean sickness and death metal worship, coalescing in a severe brain bludgeoning unlike anything you've heard before. Limited edition, 400 copies, blue with purple splatter. I love that promo photo, which also ended up on the Maggot Stomp cassette on the inside. I love it. And I love the Maggot Stomp tape cosmetics. Just very straightforward to the fucking point, And it sounds absolutely devastating on both cassette and vinyl undeath lesions of a different kind pretty much tied for number one all of these releases could have been number one but there was just something about leprophiliac that just i don't know i i can't explain it was just as soon as this came into my life i was like wow this is so fucking cool it's like just on the money when it comes to the death metal that I really, really like. There's a big Impentago influence. It's just, if you're a fan of death metal, you need to check out Leprophiliac Necrosis. Trust me. All these releases are badass. They all do have their own sound and whatnot, but like, I would say Molder and Undeath are probably the two most similar as they're the two most normal sounding death metal releases and same with leprophiliac necrosis just this is a lot more raw filthy and just nasty nasty stuff right here where these are you know if you're new to death metal you know, you can easily digest these, get through them, and enjoy them. Where Ceremonial Bloodbath is, you really have to kind of know what's going on and be like, whoa, this is something special. This stands out from the bunch, and it's pretty much like, you know, 
Titan blood with deicide parts and dead congregation influences. It's just a fucking banger. Ceremonial bloodbath, the tides of blood, and motor vanished cadavers. All these releases are amazing and they're all worth checking out in their own right. But, like I said, there's still more records to come, so there might be a re-up of death metal albums of the year. But for right now, those are my top four, and I appreciate everybody that's helped the channel this year and that's watching this right now. As always, you fucking rule. Thanks for watching. Hey.